Welcome to Future Talk. This is the program that examines the global impact of technology and tries to see just where it's leading us. On today's program, we're going to talk about something called the semantic web, which is shaping up to be the next big step in the evolution of the World Wide Web, which will make it a lot more powerful and a lot more omnipresent in our lives than it is today. With me in the studio is our co-host, Jack Porter, who is CEO of Forward Innovations Incorporated, and our special guest, Nova Spivak. Nova Spivak is founder and CEO of Radar Networks Incorporated, which is a pioneer in the development of the semantic web. Nova is a technology entrepreneur and visionary who has been involved in the founding of numerous technology companies, including EarthWeb, which helped major companies like AT&T launch their first large-scale web operations and whose initial public offering in 1998 produced one of the largest first-day gains in NASDAQ history. Nova is a leading-edge thinker with many interests, who blogs frequently about those interests, and he's also a fan of space tourism, having already flown to the edge of space and experienced weightlessness with the Russian Air Force. Nova, what exactly is the semantic web? Well, uh, the semantic web is really uh, not a new web. It's just a new uh, step in the evolution of the web we already have. And really, if I had to boil it down, um, it's about making the web smarter. It's, it's about teaching the web to understand the content that's on the web. How would that manifest itself in a practical way? What would I be able to do on it that would be easier than today's web? Probably um, the most noticeable uh, result of a semantic web will be that search will get dramatically better. But there'll be many other uh, manifestations of the technology. Uh, in the enterprise, for example, business intelligence and knowledge management will also improve. Uh, and in fact, the way that we author and share our content and build communities will also change. Are there any technologies that don't exist right now or are coming on the forefront that are really going to drive this? Well, there are, there are a number of technologies that are, that are emerging. Um, they have actually been um, proposed to standards, some are now standards, and these include um, RDF, OWL, uh, and Sparkle, which is a query language, which allows uh, these kind of database-like searches to take place. In, in a nutshell, we're really turning the web into something that's more like a database and less like a file server. Yeah. Now, where is this ultimately going to lead us? Is this largely for social networking? Is, is there going to be no barriers between time and space? All the information you want in the world is just at your fingertips instantly? Well, you know, the, the goal of, of, of a lot of these technologies is ultimately to enable collective intelligence and artificial intelligence. And I'm sure we'll be speaking about that more today. But um, initially, we'll see, you know, focus uh, taking place around social networks in particular. And, and that's actually what my company has spent some time on in the last couple of years. And then moving more towards search, which is also where we're heading. So uh, the semantic web will really add more meaning to every kind of connection, connections between people as well as connections between information and also between people and information. Why don't we talk a little bit about how we got to this point. We have a slide which shows the evolution of the web. No, actually, I'm sorry. Let's not go to that slide yet. We have another slide which shows some of the relationships, slide number one. Can we see slide number one, please? OK. So now what is this slide telling us? This slide is really showing um, that the semantic web connects a number of different kinds of things uh, with different kinds of relationships. So you can think of it almost like a language. You know, in language, we have nouns, we have verbs, we have these different parts of speech. Well, on the web, we, you know, we, right now, we really only have two things. We have web pages and links. So our vocabulary has essentially two parts of speech. Well, the semantic web is going to add many, many more distinctions. So there'll be many kinds of things, not just a web page, but there might be something like a resume or a product listing or a person. These are different kinds of things. Right now, they're just web pages. But imagine if you could mark them up and say, this is a person, this is a product listing, or this is a movie, and that machines could understand that. Similarly, with links, right now there's only one kind of link. But what if there are many kinds of links? A link could say, you know, business partner of, or friend of, or employee of, or competitor of, or product of. So you could do things like Nova is the founder of Twine, and then I can search on any one of those three items. Right. Now, today you could do that, but machines couldn't understand that. Yeah. So, you know, in Facebook, there are different kinds of links already, but they're not machine understandable. Outside of Facebook, other applications can't understand these. Yeah. The semantic web provides a way to add metadata, that is data about data, that's machine understandable. 
So every word has a bunch of other connections. I'm trying to understand what you mean when you say it understands words. Well, it, it can operate at many levels. So let's start at a, a, a sort of higher level. Let's say that you just wanted to mark up uh, a product listing for, let's say, a car. And you have different fields. So first of all, you want to say, what kind of product is it? Well, it's an automobile. So you would, you normally, you would put in a data record, automobile. But applications that don't know what an automobile is won't understand that that's a kind of car. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you actually connect that field with some metadata, little, little invisible codes that don't appear in the browser but do appear to software. Uh, and these codes link that word automobile to, to something called an ontology. And an ontology defines the meaning of terms. So in this case, you would say automobile links to a special concept for a vehicle, um, in particular uh, a car, in an ontology. And that's, that link is made in such a manner that any application that speaks this language, which is called RDF and OWL, these two languages, any application that speaks that can look up the meaning of that word. Mm -hmm. Similarly for every other field, mileage, model, all of these different things can be defined unambiguously in a machine understandable way. Kind of a Wikipedia for programs. Yeah, so the semantic web is really for software, it's not really for people. Yeah. It allows software to better understand the web, and by doing that, the web gets smarter.